Hello, and thank you for watching this Chimer Marker webinar. My name is Adam Dillman, and I am a biologist at Soft Genetics. The subject of today's webinar is Chimer Marker's concordance with best practice guidelines. This is an advanced topic in Chimer Marker, so if you haven't yet watched the Chimer Marker introductory webinar, I encourage you to go back and watch that first, and then proceed with this webinar. In particular, I'm referencing a paper that was recently published in the British Journal of Hematology titled, Monitoring of Chimerism Following Allogenic Hematopoietic Stem Cell Transplantation, Technical Recommendations for the Use of Short Tandem Repeat-Based Techniques on behalf of the United Kingdom National External Quality Assessment Service for Leukocyte Immunophenotyping Chimerism Working Group. This paper makes several technical recommendations on how to properly and accurately perform chimerism analysis. There are nine analysis considerations and five post-analysis considerations. During this webinar, I'd like to go through each of these recommendations one by one to show how they can easily be fulfilled using Chimer Marker software. That being said, let's jump right in. Okay, so to get started, I'm just going to upload some raw data by going to File, Open Data. I'll click Add and navigate to my sample files select them and then just click open and OK. You can see that I've uploaded a recipient sample, a donor sample, and five post-transplant samples. So to start I'm just going to right click on the recipient sample and set it as the recipient sample. I'll right click on the donor sample and set it as the donor sample. And now I can process the data by just clicking on the run project button or by going to project run. This is a PowerPlex 16 chemistry, so I'll just click on my PowerPlex 16 template and then just click Next, Next, and OK. And now the data will process. So now we're looking at the process data, and as discussed in the introductory webinar, you always want to check these icons here to make sure that size calling was successful. You want to check any flagging that has occurred um, with the peaks that have been called, and that's displayed in the report table. Uh, after you've done that, you can proceed directly to the single donor chimerism analysis screen, which is just under applications single donor chimerism analysis. I'm going to use the default settings here and just click OK. And now we're looking at the results screen. So each of my samples is displayed here on the file tree to the left. I can click on a sample to see the results. Uh, for each marker, I can see the percent chimerism, donor or recipient, whatever you selected, and the average chimerism values displayed below for each sample at the bottom. So as I mentioned, I'd like to go through each of the recommendations uh, mentioned in the paper and show you how they can be done in, in Chimer Marker or how Chimer Marker is compatible with those. The first two considerations that I'm going to mention are, one, where possible, fully informative markers should be used in the calculations of percent chimerism and two, the use of three or more markers where possible is recommended as it allows the comparison of results or reporting of a mean. So with regard to these, I just want to point out that for each sample, the number of informative loci is displayed at the bottom of the results. So here it says number of informative loci. Also, if a marker is ignored, it's highlighted here and says yes, that it's been ignored. So for example, in this case, it was ignored because there are two shared peaks. Um, so in calculating the average chimerism, the program will use all available markers. So in this case, there were 15 informative loci, and all 15 informative loci were used to calculate this average chimerism percentage. The number of informative loci is also included on the print report headers uh, and the results tables, which I'll show later. The, uh, the next consideration is the following. Short tandem repeats with stutter peaks coinciding with reciprocal donor or recipient peaks should be excluded from the calculation or normalized by a validated algorithm. Um, if you find a marker that has stutter peaks in it, so this would be an example, um, this has several peaks and stutter positions, you can just right click on it and ignore it. What's actually much more quick though is to actually click on these settings and in the additional settings tab there are stutter adjustment settings. Here you can select apply stutter adjustment and show stutter percentage and when we click OK and look at the results we can see that now there's a percent chimerism column 
and also a stutter adjusted percent chimerism column. So Chimer Marker has a built-in stutter adjustment algorithm and it will apply that to your samples. Uh, if the stutter adjustment is applied, the percent chimerism will actually be displayed in square brackets. So for instance, this D5S818 was initially calculated to have a 17% chimerism value, but after the stutter adjustment was applied, applied that was reduced to 12%. Uh, so then at the bottom of the samples we can see the average chimerism percentage and the stutter adjusted percent chimerism percentage. So Chimer Marker does allow the user to apply a, um, a stutter adjustment and that uh, the calculations themselves are actually all documented in the user manual. The, uh, the next recommendation is that it is recommended that STR markers suffering from severe skewing caused by preferential amplification should be avoided or normalized by a validated method. Uh, another way to think about this is if there's severe imbalance uh, between peaks and the marker. Uh, Chimer Marker has several ways of dealing with this. First of all, if we look at the analysis settings, there are two thresholds here that you can set, or two settings. One is to ignore shared allele imbalance. This is basically the idea that um, a shared peak should always be higher than a single source peak. If that's not the case, the, the marker will be ignored. Uh, we also have a setting here called ignore locus for heterozygous imbalance. So basically, if um, if there are two peaks that have an imbalance of, or I should say, if, if there's a larger peak and a smaller peak, and the smaller peak is less than, in this case, 60% the height of the larger peak, that marker will be ignored by the program and won't be used in the chimerism calculations. So there are two settings here to, to, um, to filter out any markers that have any kind of large imbalances or skewing. Um, there's also, in the panel itself, um, and I guess I should say that's what we just saw is with respect to actually performing chimerism calculations. There are also marker specific um, thresholds for actually calling peaks and calling alleles built into the panel. So these are all panel specific. If you go to the panel editor, which is just under tools panel editor, and click on your panel, uh, if you edit the markers, you can actually see that there are um, homozygote intensity filters and heterozygote imbalance filters. Uh, these filters will filter out or flag any peaks that show particularly high levels of imbalance. So that's just one additional way that Chimer Marker will, will uh, filter out peaks that do show skewing or show imbalance. And all of those uh, settings of values can be customized to fit your particular instrument or your particular um, chemistry. So proceeding back into the chimerism settings, the, uh, the next couple of recommendations uh, deal with the coefficient of variance. Uh, they say the coefficient of variance less than or equal to 5% should be obtained with a minimum of three STR markers used in the overall percent chimerism calculation. If a CV of greater than 5% is obtained, further investigation of individual STR markers should be undertaken. And where it is impossible to reduce the CV, this should be highlighted on the clinical report. So the first thing I just want to point out with regard to the CV is that um, at the bottom of the results for each sample, the coefficient of variation is calculated. So we can see here that this, this is 9% and 11% for percent donor chimerism and stutter adjusted percent donor chimerism respectively. So each sample that we click on, we can see the calculated coefficient of variation. When you uh, are in the settings, there's actually uh, an error threshold area down here, and you can set a threshold for your coefficient of variation. So, for example, if I set it to, um, if I leave it at 10%, uh, hopefully I have a sample here that has a higher coefficient of variation. Yes, here. So, um, I can see here the coefficient of variation for my stutter adjusted percent donor chimerism is 11%, and I can see it's flagged red. So, because 11% is higher than our threshold of 10%, this is flagged red. And if I generate a print report, um, which I can do just by clicking the printer icon, you'll see that in the results page on the second page of the Run Wizard, the coefficient of variation uh, is actually flagged. Uh, it's actually displayed here and flagged as well if it exceeded um, our thresholds. Uh, 
The eighth recommendation is the limit of detection should be calculated and reported to the end user. This only applies to 100% owner or 100% recipient results. Uh, for this, I just want to point out that the uh, limit of detection threshold can be displayed by just clicking on the settings again, going to additional settings, and then clicking limit of detection threshold. Here you can set the threshold type, donor or recipient, and again you can set a, a, a flagging threshold. So in this case, if the sensitivity is greater than or equal to 5%, it will be flagged for user review. So if I click this and click OK, you'll see that the results are updated so that now we have an additional column showing the limit of detection as it's been calculated for each marker. If I click through my samples here, here I have a sample where the limit of detection was actually calculated at 7% and that's greater than our um, that's greater than our threshold of 5% so it's being flagged in red. So um, that is being calculated and displayed for user review. If you decided that you didn't want to use this marker because the limited detection threshold was too high, you could simply right click on it and ignore it and the results would be updated accordingly. The final analytical consideration involves multiple donor projects. It says in the multiple donor setting it is recommended that percent chimerism is calculated and reported for individual cord donors. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to open up a double donor project. <clears throat> this is just a dilution series project with two donors. I'll just go to double donor chimerism analysis and use the default settings. Uh, I just want to show here that we have two donors. We have donor one, donor two, and a recipient. And you can see that for each donor, or I should say for each sample, the total percent donor chimerism is displayed, the total percent donor one chimerism is displayed, and the total percent donor two chimerism is displayed. So the relative proportions of each donor are calculated as well as the total percent donor chimerism. If you were to print a report, you'll see in the results window that, um, or the results page, that the same information is displayed. So the total percent donor chimerism, the total percent donor one chimerism, and the total percent donor two chimerism are all calculated and displayed here in the results. So this covers the, um, the analytical considerations. I'm now going to just reopen my um, single donor project. And now we're going to walk through the five additional post analytical considerations. So um, the first post analytical consideration is that the final percent donor or host results should be reported as an integer. Uh, there is actually a setting in Chimer Marker that allows you to do this. Uh, if you just go to the View Preferences and then go to the Others tab, there are settings down here called Chimerism Decimal Precision. So we can see right now the single donor Chimerism Analysis uh, decimal precision is set to zero. In other words, that means we're not going to have any decimals, we're just going to show it as an integer. If you were to set this to one, that would mean that we would want one uh, decimal, uh, two would mean two decimals, and so on. So to show integers, all you need to do is set this to zero, click OK, and when we proceed to single donor chimerism analysis, you can see all my results are displayed as an integer. The second group of post-analytical considerations are the following. Uh, the purity of the relevant fraction must be stated on the final report to the end user, and the CV, number of markers used in the calculation, and the limit of detection should be included in the clinical report. So I've already demonstrated this to some extent. Um, if you try to print a report, in the second page of the report you'll see that the standard deviation, coefficient of variation, uh, MOE, and number of informative loci are all displayed in addition to, you know, of course, the results. In the header, we can also see some of the analysis settings, so the LE, CV, and ME uh, thresholds that were set for this project. So all that information is displayed uh, in the header. You can see there's also room for sample comments, and at the very end of the report, there's an area for comments as well. So um, obviously, Chimer Marker can't uh, calculate the purity of a relevant fraction, but if you have that information, you could go to Tools, Chimerism Analysis Comments, and you could simply type that information here, 
uh, and that information will be displayed in the final page of the print report. So here you can see it's, uh, you know, you could type extensive comments there. So all of that's included in the print report. The fourth recommendation is the following. It is recommended that chimeras and results should be reported within five working days of receipt of sample, urgent samples within three working days. Uh, I don't really have a lot to say about this other than, um, you know, print reports can be saved as uh, PNGs or JPEGs. So if we're looking at a report, uh, you can save it immediately by clicking on the um, save icon here, uh, or you can print it directly uh, by clicking on the print icon. It's also worth mentioning that uh, there have been studies showing that Chimera Marker uh, offers tremendous time savings to, uh, to users. Uh, one study in particular showed that um, there were up to 85% uh, time savings using Chimera Marker, so that could be an important consideration. Um, the final recommendation is that Chimeras and results should be reported cumulatively in the form of a table or displayed longitudinally by graph and include details of the sample type analyzed. Uh, longitudinal graphs can be generated in Chimera Marker using the Longitudinal Report option. If you just click this, um, this will bring up the Longitudinal Graph page. Uh, you can add samples to the chart just by clicking on this check mark. You can include your post samples just by clicking on them, and you'll notice that you can select a date for each of these samples as well. So you just click the date. Um, I'm just going to use today's date. When you click OK, those will be loaded into the chart. Um, so you can get a good idea of the trend of chimerism over time. For each sample, you can see that there are different values displayed above them. And that can be modified by just clicking on the settings. You can add or remove any of these that you want. You can format the date uh, formatting, the chart setting, and all that kind of stuff. You can also show this in a 3D format, which um, looks pretty nice. If you just click on the Show 3D option, you can adjust the effect. Um, you can also show this as a line chart as well, so whichever you prefer. Um, and of course this can be printed as well just by clicking on the printer icon. You can generate a nice uh, longitudinal print report. So this is an easy way to generate a longitudinal graph and of course as you're saving projects you can come back to this graph and add additional samples to it and have it grow over a, a series of transplants. So that concludes all of the, um, all the analytical considerations and post-analytical considerations that were covered in the paper. Uh, one final thing I did want to mention is there was a section on um, mandatory information on request form. Uh, it says, prior to the first chimerism analysis, the following information should be available in line with local sample acceptance criteria. And it goes on to list quite a few things, full patient demographics, um, donor type, donor sources, donor gender, transplant date, transplant type, and so on. I just wanted to show that that could all be included in print report headers in Chimer Marker by clicking on this um, recipient information box right here. Here you can put a case number, you can put a name, you know, maybe Bob Smith, you can put an age, you can put a date of birth, a gender, um, the, the transplant date, the transplant type, any information about the donor, any additional information about you know, the setups or anything like that and click OK. And that information will all be included in print report headers. So if you look at the print report header, uh, the case number is displayed, sample name, date of birth, transplant type, and so on. So this is very customizable. You can put in a lot of information. There's also a validation box and of course the electropherogram and results. So you can really pack in a lot of information into the report headers. So that concludes our walkthrough through this paper. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to explore the Chimer Marker site or stick around to find out how you can uh, get additional information. Thank you for watching this Chimer Marker webinar. For more information or for a free 30-day trial of Chimer Marker and other soft genetics products, please visit softgenetics.com or email info at softgenetics.com. Please send technical support questions to tech underscore support at softgenetics.com. Thanks for watching.